What's up, Titas and Titas? Jared and Conde here, and you're watching Tita Fit. All right, so today we have a very, very um, interesting video for all of you. So gyms are open, and you can now come back. And as you can see, it is 4:30 p.m. Wait, right there. It's 4:30 p.m. and we have the gym to ourselves completely there's absolutely no one here except for the staff thank you to the staff for letting us shoot okay yeah so today we got this question from uh, instagram a while back and we decided to finally answer it so i remember in uh one of uh, our subscribers ian okay ian sent this question what are my five favorite pieces of equipment so we decided to make a series so we'll start with a commercial gym so if you're interested in this kind of content please don't forget to subscribe give this video a like a thumbs up Sirain nyo yung like button na yan guys kasi yung YouTube algorithm matutulungan niya kami at makakalat niya tong video na to para sa iba pa para makinabang din sila. Alright, okay. So I'm Jaden Conde. I'm a 15-year veteran of the fitness industry. I've been a coach in three countries. I have ran gyms, CrossFit boxes, CrossFit affiliates, and I share my experiences and insights with you guys so that you can benefit from it. Alright, so my first favorite machine, so first favorite piece of equipment inside a gym. So this is just in the context of a commercial gym. For those of you who are members of commercial gyms, number one is dun, 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 a cable station. And I like my cable stations like this wide as compared to a cable station more like that, as compared to the cable stations that are narrower. So on this cable station, you can do everything from cable crossovers or chest flies or rear delt races. It's wide enough for you to be able to do that. To using a single station, you can do tricep press downs, you can do curls if you attach it to a low pulley. So you can basically do whole body workouts with different types of attachments. So this one here, this is called a rope attachment. This is, uh, you can use this for your tricep rope press downs or you can use this for curls with hammer curls, rope hammer curls. And that is a straight bar attachment on the floor. And this is a single bar or single handle. Some people call it a horseshoe attachment because back in the day they used to come looking like horseshoes so you can do so many things with this and they usually come like th this pre-core brand usually comes with this type of a pull-up bar so it comes with the pull-up bar you can do pull-ups where your hands are over you can do chin-ups where they're under okay so pull-ups difference quick fact fun fact pull-up if we reverse our grip this is now a chin-up Voila, and you can even do parallel grip or behind the neck pull-ups. See, so it's a very versatile piece of equipment and uh, this is actually very advanced as a multi-station, but in this particular example, I'm only using the cable station. Right, second piece, favorite equipment, seated cable row. All right, seated cable row. I like the way this hits your, your back, your rhomboids. So. Uh, not a lot of gyms have this, so it comes with a V-grip. Uh, you can change the grip as well, just like a cable station. And uh, I love it because the way it isolates the back in that rowing motion is very, very effective. It's hard to replicate using another implement like a dumbbell, a barbell. Uh, as you know, the advantage of using cables, pulleys over barbells, dumbbells is that there's constant tension on the muscle. So you get to subject the body or the muscle to a longer time under tension. And that is actually going to lead to more muscle growth. The good thing about that is time under tension is actually one of these stimulus or stimuli to elicit more muscle growth. Whereas with a barbell or a dumbbell, when you pull it, let's say you row, gravity will normally take it. Uh, gravity will increase the velocity or the speed of that weight going down. Hence, if your body is not used to doing a negative rep, that reduces the time under tension and you're just letting it fall. But if you're using a cable row, there is an advantage to that. So that's number two. Number three, seated leg curl. All right, so a seated leg curl machine. What I like about this, it's very hard to replicate using a free weight. Like uh, there are a lot of uh, exercises you can do for your hamstrings. So such as Romanian deadlifts, using a dumbbell or a barbell even a cable that's possible you can also do it using cable pull-throughs or you can also do 
Uh, you can also isolate them using single arm, uh, sorry, single leg good mornings, so on and so forth. Sometimes even using a hyper extension bench, but I think the seated leg curl is very unique in the way it hits your hamstrings. So uh, I like it for that purpose. That's my third favorite piece of equipment. Number four favorite piece of equipment is a squat cage. Some people call it a squat rack, a power rack. In this case, it's actually really a power rack. Difference being a, between a squat rack and a power rack is a squat rack can be, cannot, like a squat rack can mostly just catch you for at one level. So the supports or the stoppers are not adjustable with a squat rack. With a power rack, they are adjustable. You can move them, you can do presses on them, you can do bench presses, adjust the height of everything, you can do back squats, basically everything. This even has some pull-up bar adjustments. So for those of you who have home gyms, this would basically be your um, your station to do everything, all the exercises you're doing at home. And uh, if you do have the money to invest in one, this would be my primary, primary investment if you do have the money and the space. So if you have a garage, if you have a, if you have a backyard, or if you have like a spare room, uh, you can get a squat rack. Our friends at Metcon Group have very nice squat racks. So shout out to Coach Anton and Metcon Group PH. My favorite piece of equipment, okay, is this one. So this is a rear delt machine slash pec deck or pec fly machine. So if you are facing away from the machine, you can do flies with this. So such as, yeah, there. You can do flies for your chest. Okay, that's your fly. If you face the machine, on the other hand, it changes and you're now hitting your rear delts. And this is, uh, these are other exercises that you can do flies with a dumbbell. You can do rear delt races with a dumbbell as well. But I kind of like the versatility of this one because it isolates them without you having to balance yourself. Or if you do them supported on a bench, there's a little bit of um, an issue trying to get into that bench actually. And uh, I don't like that. So here, so rear delt flies. You've seen us do this in a lot of our other videos. This isolates the rear delts. So, for those of you who don't know, your shoulders or your deltoids, there are three parts. The anterior or the front part, the medial or the middle, this is what gives you the illusion of having broad shoulders. And then there's that rear part which activates more when you're pulling, like when you're doing rows, when you're doing pull-ups. Those are the rear deltoids or the posterior deltoids. And I like this, it isolates them pretty well. So those are my five favorite pieces of equipment inside the gym. Bonus, if you made it this far, here's our bonus for you. Bonus is that the mark of a, of a good gym for bodybuilding or body sculpting is always if they have, for me, personal, it's my personal opinion, uh, comment down below if uh, you don't agree, if you disagree, if you have other favorite pieces of equipment that you feel. My bonus is a donkey or standing calf race machine. So those are my favorites. Uh, I know you can do them on with dumbbells on an elevated step, but if you have a machine for them, like uh, I've been to Gold's Venice in the Mecca, what's considered the, the Mecca of bodybuilding, and they do have multiple types of calf machines. So they have standing calf, they have dumpy calf, they even have seated calf, and they have many, many of those. So remember, for those of you who are into bodybuilding, your calves, okay, can either win you or lose you the show. It depends on how beautiful those calves are, how diamond cut those calves are. They call them diamond shape. Now, don't look at my calves. My calves are horrible. These are genetically inferior to my other body parts like my shoulders. They've always been a problem for me. Doesn't mean I don't train them. It's just that they're not my priority. So uh, I train more for a functional manner than stepping on a stage in a um, bikini, a mankini, whatever you want to, posing trunks here, that's to call it. And that's not my priority, but uh, I do train them for function and I do a lot of uh, skipping on the rope, a lot of hopping, a lot of jumping, and my calves are used for that purpose. For aesthetics, however, um, I don't train my calves for aesthetic much, aesthetics much, especially since I started CrossFit about eight years ago. But before that, I used to try my best. I uh, wasn't so successful with building my calves, but say la vie, guys, such is life, you know? <laughs> and, uh, that's it. So I hope you guys like this video. Let me know in the comment section. What are your favorite pieces of equipment in the gym? Let us know if you want us to do a favorite pieces of equipment in a CrossFit box or 
even for a home gym so we could probably do something like that like what are your five essential pieces for a home gym let us know in the comments guys thank you titos and titas i hope you like that video we'll see you next time